right, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Let's go ahead and read it for you. Father God, first of all, we just thank you. We thank you for, for assurance. For the assurance that you are God, that you sit on the throne. And even when we might understand what you're doing, we know you got it. We know you'll handle it. You, you cover it. So Lord God, as we worship, as we spend this time worshiping and honoring you, Lord, we just pray that your presence be revealed. We know that you're here. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere. You're, you're like me. See, everywhere, everywhere you want to be. And you, you want to be right here. So God, make your presence known to us. So God, let us break off those chains that hold us back and be free to worship you. And Lord God, we pray for every person who's watching this, who's going to see this right now. I pray that they are blessed by the worship, blessed by the word. Lord God, we pray for our members who are out and about today. We just pray that you protect and you cover them in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we just give this time to you. We give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Till all 
I want is for you. You to be glorified. You to be lifted high. All I want is for you.
of the song says praise like oil for you I pour it out for you I pour it out I pour I pour it out for you like this oil that might not be worth much to, to others it's worth a lot to me because I'm giving it to my savior I'm laying it at his feet that she she she, she put the oil on his feet then you have then like the tears and the hair all this like uh, this pouring out and I think at times we forget that we are we are poured out we have God to pour out on us but we're also called to pour, up, pour out our love on him and also pour out to others. So. I pour 
this perfume not to impress the people standing around. I pour this perfume because your worthiness I stand before you now. Oh 
Lord God, we give this time for the word over to you, Lord God, bless this word. Lord God, he that hath an ear, let him hear. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come against all distractions, we come against all hindrances, we come against anything that will try to block the word from being delivered, from being heard, from being received in the heart. And Lord God, we just pray that your spirit breaks up the ground in, of the heart in the name of Jesus, that may, these seeds that are being thrown by the word of God grow to a, to a bountiful harvest. That in turn helps others grow. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we have come to the end of our Narrow Road series. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is a yay moment. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, it's interesting. We've talked about, you know, the choice to change. I'm looking out. I'm really like flipping through my notes. Um, we talked about the choice. We start off with the choice to change. You know, we have to make the choice to follow God, to walk this narrow road out. Or, you know, do our own thing. And, you know, the way, the way of the Lord is blessing. It's narrow, but it's blessing. But the way of man is wide. And you can do all, we can be all 270 and merge lanes. But eventually leads you to the same spot you started. It's a big old circle. That's true. That one's good. I ain't saying that when God can preach it. The second one is restoration when God cleans house. That when we invite God into our hearts, we have to give him the room to come in and clean house. That we can't live with our same avocado, the same avocado appliances and the and the shag carpeting and the mirror wall and all that. We got to get updated to 2017. We have to allow God over time to change us and to make us habitable for him, not for ourselves. And then we talked about walking it out. So, you know, we're walking letters, love letters to God. We're led by his spirit. Because we're led by the spirit, we show it through our fruit. And then we show God's spirit through walking in love, which is the more excellent way. And then because we follow God, we bring something different to the table. And when, so because of that, we have to walk this road out. And walking that road out is showing people that we are who we say we are. And then we go to do, go, do, and be. 
where we, this is us filling our, our mandate, our commission, going out, bringing, going out, preaching the gospel, doing the word of the Lord, and then being witnesses to all the world of the power of Christ. And then November, our lovely co-pastor talked about a journey of love, talk about the true meaning, true significance of what love is. That love is not conditional, it's sacrificial, and it's agape, mm -hmm. that means it's unconditional, that anyone can receive it. And then we had, we had John preaching about how to, be, to walk in, our, in the believer's authority, High five, good job Amen. on that one. Papa, understanding that we are not just people, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Yeah. And when you acknowledge that and walk in your authority, that's when you see change happen. And then we had Trey come back in the same day and talk about forgiveness. What had happened was, <laughs> that was the actual title, she never said it. Forgiveness, <laughs> what had happened was. Talk about the story of the man who was forgiven by his master of a debt, but then turned around and went WWE on somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> On, on another side, on, on another slave. That's how we are with God. That God is our master, and that we say, and God shows us forgiveness, and then we turn around, and look at everybody else, and they go, "Well, you better have my money." Oh, remember all that? It was ten billion dollars. He owed him a ten billion dollar debt, and then that the master, the slave owed the master a ten billion dollar debt, and then then the slave owed, then the other slave owed that owed that slave that owed the master about ten dollars. <laughs> so now we're coming to the final message of the series called Starting Block or Stumbling Block. Mm. You know that, that title, like, oh, ow, you felt that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man, I gotta come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love, I love watching. <laughs> um, the Lord has been speaking to me, because I didn't know how this series was going to end. I'm like, okay, we got Christmas Eve, we're going to a weekly, and God said, okay, this series is supposed to last for December. How are we going in this puppy? He said, I want you to pay attention to what's going on around you. Not just in here, but around you. Like the world. And then look at the condition of the American church. And I'm like, people won't be mad at me. He said, yeah, and people were mad at Jesus when he was on the earth. That's why he got crucified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. True story. We as Christians are supposed to show that more excellent light, right? We're supposed to show that that show that you know what we got, you know, this we are salt and light to the earth. That you know we we enhance the flavor, we preserve things. We also point you to the right direction. But I've been asking myself, what direction are we pointing ourselves to? And this narrow road, this journey that we walk on, is like a race. And I, and when we and when there are races, there's always a starting block. I actually had to look this up this morning to make sure I wasn't crazy. The starting block is designed that when the racers are like this, thank God for working out, <laughs> that when they run, they are able to jump, to kind of push themselves off the board to give them an, an enhanced start, right? Mm, yeah. Starting blocks are standard on races. The Bible says the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but the one that endures until the end, right? Mm. So this narrow road really is a race. It's like the longest marathon you're going to run. But before the starting blocks came, they had to dig into the ground and hope and pray they dug in hard enough to get up and do what they needed to do. Yes, I know we're trying to scream. <laughs> Although, like, red. So, so we, we talk about Christianity being a race, but we don't realize that there are starting blocks, stumbling blocks, and then flat-out hindrances. And the question that we need to examine this morning is, where do we fit in this? Are you a starting block, a stumbling block, or a flat-out hindrance? And how does that look in the context of our everyday life? So if you've got your, your Bibles or your Fibles, if you've got your phone on your Bible. <laughs> your Fibles. <laughs> your Fibles. <laughs> we almost said bring your Bible so we can go old school today, but I'm like, no. Nah. And we're actually reading from a version that I typically don't use. I've actually never used this. We're reading from the ESV. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. yeah, we're reading from the ESV. Um, I learned something from one of the groups, someone, that there's like a span of Bibles. There's the, there's like the figurative, and then there's like the literal based on the Hebrew, Greek, and all the other languages that make up the, make up the Bible. And I was looking up specific wording, and God said, use that thing. God was like, every time I kept trying to go to the university, it keeps going back to ESV. So that's where we're going to live. We're going to go to Philippians, the second chapter. We're going to go from verses 3 
from verse 3 to verse 11. And we're going to talk about starting blocks first. Right? Let's go old school. If you have it, say amen. 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 I got it right here in front of me. Let's read. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this, in, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equally with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that, if, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, what does it mean to be a starting block? Let's see, I'm just going to lock the wall. What does it mean to be a starting block? A starting block means that you are propelling people towards their destiny. What's our church motto? Saving the lost, healing the saved, equipping the church. All that involves you pushing people into their God-giving destiny. That when you meet someone who is unsaved, you're pushing them, you're propelling them, you're encouraging them to walk in the direction of Christ. To get off, to take that exit off 270, hop on 33, and go from five to four to six lanes to two. Mm -hmm. You're pushing them, you're, you're pushing them, you're saying, come with me. You're showing them the more excellent way. When you're when you're a starting block, even in correction, you can still be a starting block. Mm -hmm. Because one that when you truly have love for somebody, you are willing to go to them and say, hey, 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 you know. You know, let's work this out. Now, you need to get saved. You ain't no God. You the devil. You de okay. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. And the thing is, we... Woo, I can't go there yet. I gotta go there on the next scripture. But we are... But we're, but, but we're not used to that chastening and love that I can go to one of my students and I have two choices... Even when they get on my nerves, I can go, you gonna fail, you gonna fail my class, you are a failure epically, how dare you cross into my presence and the, all the neck and everything and the, all the, I can go there, I can go, what's going on? What is hindering you from succeeding in my classroom? Nothing that's the brain. Lies and deceit. Let's try this again. What's going on? I can't help you unless you tell me. And then give them the grace to say, here's what's going on. And then based on what's going on, you say, all right, let's do this together. Let's work together to fix your problem, to carry your burden. This thing that I, I mean, I'm not going to be able to go home with you and fix it, but while you're here, we're going to fix it. We're going to get this thing together. And the thing is, in the climate that we're in right now, we, we've lost the, the meaning of being a starting block. We've lost it. We've lost the meaning of, you know, we're supposed to push people, the unsaved, to the knowledge of Christ. We're supposed to be that stable, thank you, Jesus, we're supposed to be that stable example that doesn't move or waver. The starting block is dug into the ground by stakes. And, the ground, and, and I learned something else when I was doing the research on this, that, that traps are being so cheaply made that they start to refine the, how they make the starting blocks because if the, if the track is cheap, the starting block's going to what? Slide. Mm -hmm. There was a man who built a house on the rock. This is the Bible. It's a parable. That when the winds and the storms and everything came at them, the house stayed, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was a house, man that built a house on the sand. And the storms and the winds and the rains came. Where did his house go? Mm -hmm. To the left. <laughs> mm -hmm. Left to the left. <laughs> Where it just slid. As starting blocks, we also make sure that our foundation is stable. If our own foundation is not stable, people can push off of us, but because of the exertion of their push, we're going to mm -hmm. slide. What we used to call that back, in, back when I was growing up was backslide. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you backslide, that means you have moved away 
from the, you have lost your foundation and slipped back to your old habits and to your old ways. And the thing is now we are, we are I'm going to just say it, that, that there, are being, there, are, there are being churches and sects of Christianity and all these groups because, that are being built, they want to be started by, they're propelling people into the direction, but the more they propel people to the direction, the more they slide back. Because they were not built on the rock. They were not built on the strong ground. They were built on the sand, and the sand cannot take the pressure of someone jumping off of it. That will preach. I was bringing on the game. It's not able to, it's not able to handle the pressure. And also, there's sometimes that if someone's aware of this, there's a second person that stands behind the starting block and holds the starting block in place so that way the starting block doesn't move. That's called accountability. Mm. That's called teamwork. That's called being the body of Christ. If I see that the grounds, if you cannot handle doing this, let me get behind you and hold you up so that way when this person launches, you don't slide back. When you see a brother in the fall, restore them, restore such a one. Remembering yourself and guarding yourself. And sometimes guarding yourself is, hey, I need you to pray for me while I'm dealing with this person. So while you're dealing with that person, that person that's praying for you, interceding for you, is holding down you, holding you down as a starting block. So that way when the moment of salvation comes, you're not, you're not being drugged down by the sin that the person is carrying or the pressure that they have on them. Instead, you're able to, to bear the weight and then release it in the job. That's good. That's what being a starting block means. A starting block, starting block just there, you're just there, just just bounce. I, I praise God that in my Christian walk, that I've been able to, to help people. I realize that part of my calling is mentoring. That I'm not meant to, uh, there's some people who can be like, I'm gonna sit in my office, everybody else do the work. I'm one of those people like, let me sit with you, let's have coffee. Tell me about your problems. And then I said, they're like, well, you got the same problem. And I come back like, you know what? Let me get myself together. I'm supposed to help them. But I've had to learn that even though I have a strong foundation, sometimes you need somebody holding on the back saying, all right, this is the area that, you weak, that you're weak in. So let me hold you down while you handle this so that way you're not hit by the aftershock. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten how to launch people forward into their destiny. Rather, we have gotten comfortable and sitting in our pews, sitting in our seats, and saying, okay, well, they got this. I'm just, somebody else got this. And then, as they're running the race, we, we, we have become stationary trees growing by the side of the track. And you know, trees don't grow just down, they grow out, right? Mm -hmm. And occasionally, if the tree can't find room underground, it's gonna go up, then down. And as this person's running, their, running this race, we're being steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. But yet, uh, one of our roots has risen up, and the person running, and trip. Let's go to our next scripture. Let's go to Romans. That's a weird job. 14, 23. It had that. We're going to start at verse 13. <laughs> Romans 14, 13 through 23. Feels like preach daddy. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about being a stumbling block. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. But it is unclean for anyone who thinks it who thinks it unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, you do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes peace and for mutual upbringing. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good not to eat meat, eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to what? Stumble. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. 
Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Now we're going to jump to 1 Corinthians real quick. So that's 1 Corinthians 10, 31, 33. You don't have to turn there. But it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to the Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved. Let's talk about this. We're running our race. Okay, they just they just sprung off. We're running our race. And, you know, we become the tree, the steadfast, immovable tree. We're like that big old redwood, like, hallelujah. And then the root comes out, and they're running, and they're tripping. The thing is, with the church, I've said this multiple times, I'm going to say it again. We are so quick to eat our young. Here's why. We come to this place that we have to be perfect. Redwood trees are quite beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. They're tall, majestic, majestic, last for centuries, just they're good. They're so big, you can build a tunnel through it, and trees will be like, that's the best you got. <laughs> and it's still going to grow. Beautiful trees. But yet, the root system might get in the way of something else growing. Or the roots might grow, you might be walking along the trail and you trip. And so people, so when, and people, and people, people that are walking with God, sometimes we trip, sometimes we get fired. Not, not fired, sometimes we get tired. You know, I get fired too. <laughs> and then, you know, just, and fall out. And we might fall down. But what is the job of a believer? The job of a believer is not to be like, why are you on the ground? Why are you down there? Or worse yet, cause the trip, call be the one that calls them to trip up and be like, why are you fall? Why are you tripping? Or cause them to hurt themselves. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? That's not our job. Our job is to... It goes back to that encouragement. Even in correction, you can still encourage somebody. That's something I've had to learn. Teaching, ministry, pastoring. Even in correction. I can correct you and make you laugh. I have done it. And you, you won't even know. I'll be like, oh, just told me to do it. Okay, I'm not going to do it then. I'll be cracking up. But he, he told me to do it. I ain't going to do it. But we've come up in a Christian culture that, that at the minute someone has a failing, the minute that someone that someone has a moment of weakness or 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 we try to be all extra sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, you know, you walk in like walking with your big old Bible. This way you see when I was a kid. People walk in with their big old with their dresses and their hats like bam. And with their big old Bible talking about I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And do speak. Y'all say it like that. Do speak in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And they sit in their chairs like this. <laughs> and a woman in the street walks in. And the first thing they did, they grabbed a the prayer, prayer sheet and covered up. You ain't supposed to wear that in the church. You ain't supposed to do that in the church. <laughs> I don't know why you got that got that hair color. You ain't supposed to do that in the church. Oh, oh, y'all. Y'all gay. Y'all can't come up in the church. And this person is seeking God. Seeking God. They know they're in their dirt. They know they're wrong. They know what things are. Even a brother is trying to, is not walking out their kingdom calling and, you know, you like, it don't take all that in the church. You just caused your brother to stumble. You've caused your brother to fall. You've caused your brother to be like, I can't do, I don't, if you, we're not supposed to intentionally cause someone harm. We are a do not harm religion, contrary to popular belief. People think, oh, we spoke. Even, you can be right, you can be dead right and still be dead wrong. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't encourage them to move forward in their walk. You caused them to fall. You caused them to question their faith. You caused them, and there's, que there's questioning for the, for the purposes of growth. And then it's just flat out, am I, do I really want to do this? If the end goal is not growth, it is not of God. Mm. If the end goal is not to bring people to the knowledge of Christ, it is not of God. If the end goal does not have love, have an ounce of love in it, mm -hmm. it's not of God. My grandma used to tell me about how my grandpa used to say, I love you, Vera. Not I love you, Vera. I love you, Vera. 
And she, and you know, if you ever meet, if you ever meet Grandma Vera, sweet woman, reminds me of Medea. <laughs> uh, so we sit on her on her porch and we talk. We we spill some tea. We talk. And she's like, she's like, Cass, listen. Don't let nobody tell you they love you. Because they don't love you. People in the church look at you and say they love you. I love you, God bless you. They don't love you. Because everything they say to you ain't right. When you love somebody, when you love them, when you love them in the church, you will find every mistake possible. You will find a reason. You need to get your last one. And you might not say it like that. You might not say, like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to pray for you. You need to get your full salvation, yes. But your, and your spirit, you need to get right. You ain't right. You left. Just straight left. Just because... Because we think that Christianity, we think that this walk with God is we have we are judge during executioner. Because that's what's been propagated on the news. We are judge during executioner. <laughs> Everything else we you ain't living right. Go on the news. I'm gonna say it. Get on the news. We're standing for Christian values. You're the most unchristian thing I've been seeing <laughs> off the <of> earth. <laughs> we believe God, but your actions don't see it. And because of your actions, there are millions of people stumbling. People falling day after day. I don't know. People come into the knowledge of Christ and then leave, not because of what anything God did, because what people did. We talk about this. Show me your scar. We have people who are walking the streets right now who are on who were at some point on fire for God. And then someone put their foot out and tripped them up. But they tripped them up so hard they couldn't get up. And then the person's like, why are you tripping? Why are you fall? Why are you down there? Mm, why are you hitting yourself? Mm, why are you hitting yourself? And then wonder why they don't come back to the church. Not just your building, but to the body of Christ. Because we have we have shown that love is why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? We've caused the brother to stumble. Last one. Let's talk about hindrances. Man, I wish you could Facebook live this. This would have been a good one. So we're in Galatians. It's going to be verses seven, chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. I'm going to jump to 13 through 15. And I love this. Let me give you some context with what Paul was talking about right before the scripture. He was talking about the whole circumcision, non circumcision argument. And some people, and this is call this thing. It's like, in the end, it's like, in the end, it doesn't matter. But this is what he says after this. He's, this is what he says here. I love this. You were, one, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view, and the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. Verse 13, for you were called the freedom brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Ouch. Sometimes we are final hindrances. We block people from the God-given destiny. We mean well. We say that, you know, we say the usual, God said to tell you, or I see, or you know what you see me you see me from that pizza, not from God. And then let's go back to the national landscape. There are some people who have been tripped up and they've fallen. And then there's people who have been flat out who've been who've been running. They were running hard. They were running that race. They were enduring. They got their fifth win and they're going. And then there's a wall. And the wall was not the devil. The wall was man. We have free will. Yeah, we have free will. We have the choice to run it, or we can be the wall for other people. This is the wall. And we've literally stopped them, knowingly or unknowingly, from doing what God has called them to do. How can we as believers say that we love God, but yet we are the very thing that is stopping people from finding God? I remember when music began to shift in the African-American church. And this happens all the time. This happened through history. 
about playing the organ in church. We don't do that in church. You know about drums in the church. We don't do that in church. But worship was shifting from, from devotionals because with the, well, how, how, soonish, how soonish used to start, <laughs> how service used to start was we had the deacons get up and do devotional service. So we had like four or five old people, old, old men, we 60, average age like 90, I don't know. They get up, <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody, we're going to do devotional. I love to pray. <laughs> I love to pray the name. Then the younger generation was like, all right, you know what? We need just, and then, you know, and the choir was like, everybody was in their robes and sweating. I was one of them, standing up in the robes and just sweating. And we were singing these songs. And and then we had the 80s, 70s and 80s, had Andre Crouch and, you know, the, the Hawkins family and, you know, Jump, even jump in the 90s, you had Kurt Franklin, Hezekiah Walker, John P. Key, and everybody still had their robes on, but it was like, they was, they was getting, you don't do that, you don't dance in church, the only time you dance is when you shop. Even that was new, because in the Baptist church, if you had a, if you had a fit, you have about five, six nurses, because you used to have nurses, had the hats, the dresses, and all that, walk up to you with smell and salt and snap you out of it. You don't, you don't, you don't do that in church. This church. My family grew up Baptist. Well, my mom, actually, my mom and my dad's side grew up Baptist. And all of them came to the knowledge of the power of the Holy Spirit in the 80s. And what would happen? My grandma used to go to Bethany Baptist. And he would sit. And he sit there and the the Holy Spirit would be in the room. And the, and the Holy Spirit was like, who, who am I going to get? Who am I going to get? Who am I going to get? Fear. And then have a, and she had a fit. Like, all that because if you ever seen a true Baptist fit, it's a true Baptist fit. <laughs> So she had a Baptist fit, and, all, and here come the nurses. Vera, yes, Lord, Vera, smell the salt. <laughs> and then they wonder why a generation left the church. Because it did not allow them to exercise that their new knowledge, that next level of the anointing. And then now we're, we're dealing with a, cult, with a worship war and a cultural clash again. Which is why I keep saying we need to be here. We're dealing with a culture clash to where music is shifting. We're moving to a more electronic sound. That pretty much worship sounds like a, an, a, an EDM party at the club. And there's some people who are like, you don't need all that in the church. Um, here's my hope of worship. And I gotta, I gotta close. And even though I walk with God, that we become a place, and particularly in the area of worship, that's why my hands are all up on it right now, is that we can be. I teach when I teach um, sessions about well, multicultural worship about being a chameleon. That we're able to change our color at any time, but we do not change who we are. Because the fear is that is that we have to change who we are if we change our sound. We have to change who we are if we allow the young people to to move from I love to praise him to like to like you know choirs that are more active and praise teams and having all those things or churches that go from hymnals and realize that our young people are leaving. You don't have to change who you are. But we use that, we use that religiosity to create a hindrance. We use our piety and our pride in our walk with God to be a hindrance to people. And we wonder why you don't see them. You wonder why the person that you watch get delivered from drugs, they leave all of a sudden and you find out there's that one person who couldn't let their past go, who walked up to them. And this is, I'm telling you this stuff, I'm telling you that it's true. I've seen it. People walk up, people walk up on people and be like, you what? Once a crackhead, always a crackhead. They act. All because they feel like their righteousness has entitled them to a level of, of sanctification where we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. And if I open up your closet, you're going to have a whole graveyard full of skeletons. But you don't want people to pull out your stuff because it's in the past. It's covered by the blood. Their past is covered by the blood, too. The things that have happened to them is covered by the blood, too. So we cannot be a wall. And again, there are a lot of there are people walking out outside who are sitting in their houses who they, they have jumped from church to church to church to church. Because people have been walls to them. There have been hindrances to them. They've tripped them up on their wall. My prayer is that every person that has crossed through these doors, that we get them back. 
that we examine ourselves, every person that has walked through our doors, that has left. And when they let, when they leave, I don't go, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. I'm like, okay. God bless you. That's where God's leading you. God bless you. I got you. You need anything from us, let us know. My prayer is that we get them back. And when we get them, and, and when we get them back, that we serve as starting blocks for them. My challenge to you is that you can cause anybody to stumble. If you cause if you've been a hindrance to anybody, this week, call them. Email them, Facebook them. Be like, you might not remember what, what happened. You might not remember what I said. Or if you do, okay. But I repent to you for causing you to stumble. I repent that my actions, even our habits, if they've caused you to stumble, I apologize. I repent to you. Because I want to see God's best. I want to be the starting block for you. It is what it is. What happened is what happened. And I lay myself at the feet of the cross for this. And I say, forgive me. I, I beg, I plead for your forgiveness. We don't have to be buddy buddy. We don't have to be friends. But I ask for your friend. The goal of this ministry. I don't care if it gets super big or not. Doesn't matter if we all end up on TVN or Daystar <laughs> or all the other channels that keep popping up. It doesn't matter if we have this huge multi-million dollar building. Or we're storefront it for 50 years. All I know is this. That I want people to say that True Vision Christian Community launched them into their destiny. That churches were birthed out of this church. That ministry, that people who never thought they'd be able to share the word of God to one person, let alone hundreds of thousands, they were able to do that here. We are not meant to be like everybody else. We're not meant to be like the rest of the churches that, we're, that we've seen. We're never, we've, I, personally for me, I knew I was never meant to be that. And it was hard for me to try to be that. But when I found myself, when I found out who I really was, it is my, it is my mandate on everything I do in, in life to push them, push people into your, to their purpose. And sometimes that they will exert more force than you might be able to handle. So you guys might say, hold me down. Hold me down and allow them to go. But we're not going to be another pass through for some people. But we're going to be a home. And if people pass through, they leave out here better than they can. So I ask you this question today. Are you, where are you? You got three choices. Give me, I'm still in time, but uh, three choices. Are you a starting block? Are you a stunning stumbling block? Are you a flat out hindrance? If you're a starting block, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. It is your job to teach others how to be starting blocks. If, you're a, if you've been a stumbling block or a hindrance, if you feel like you are one, this is what I love about God. That when we repent and we turn away, it goes away. And we're able to walk forward. We're able to walk forward to what God's called us to do. God's called us to walk forward as a church. That, that we keep going no matter what. That we push through no matter what. God has given us blessing or blessing or blessing. You won't see two of those blessings today. God has given us blessing or blessing or blessing. So let's walk in that. So let's go ahead and pray. Actually, we're going to go ahead and close here. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the word that was given. We thank you for you taking the ingredients and making a meal out of it, God. And Lord, God, we just ask right now, do as you look in our hearts. Are we starting blocks? Are we stumbling blocks? Are we hindrances? Have we been a mix of the three? Lord God, if we repent for make, causing our brothers and our sisters to stumble. We repent for call, for hindering people to their God-given purpose, for building up those walls and, and, and you know contributing to someone falling away. Lord God, we repent for that. And Lord God, we pray right now that you send people in our path that, that we can be starting blocks for. 
that you send people in our path that can hold us down when, when the weight and the pressure that, they, that the person carry is too much. So God, as we go, we tear down, we take a break and go to the next destination for our meeting. Well, God, we pray that you just cover, cover this day. Well, God, we thank you for the Ohio Glass Museum, for their hospitality, for covering us, for being our home, being our tent of meeting for this season. And Lord God, I pray I speak growth of profits in 2018 in this building. Lord God, I pray that people are always crossing through the stores, that they get the additional staffing that they need, that people start renting out these rooms left and right, so that way they are not in financial lack, but they're in surplus to do the other things that they dream of, God. Do not cover us and protect us. In Jesus' name.